Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, hey, remember God's instruction concerning our daily bread. Are you ready? Praise God. I'm ready for a miracle. Are you? Let's pray. Father, say this with me. Say, Lord, I receive today my daily bread. It is coming to me now. I have abundance of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, I know this. This week is going to be a week of miracles for you. I'm telling you the truth. Things are going to be happening so fast and so good for you. I know that because that's God's intention and that's God's heart for you. So receive it as they begin to come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go into today's broadcast. Say, Father, thank you for your spirit that is available even right now. Jesus said, you will guide us into all truths. And we have faith in the words of Jesus. So today we expect only one thing, that we be guided into your truths and we receive the blessing of your word. I declare every body is lifted right now Yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I welcome you to this new week. And God has a lot in store for you. And that's why he has sent me your way. Now, all God will do for you, I want you to get this. He will send his word to you. The only way you know it is God that is behind that miracle is because his word will come first then the miracle will follow. If you just see signs and wonders and it's not responding to any word from God, then you should begin to wonder or doubt, where is this coming from? Praise God. Because the Bible talks about lying wonders. But when God shows up, his word comes first. Now, that's why I told you God sent me to you to bring his word to you. John said, he that God sends does one thing only. He speaks God's words. Praise God. So the Lord has sent me to you today. And I know because the word, it's not just mere words. There is power in the word. Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So the gospel we preach is words but these words are laced with power see to bring you salvation what salvation to bring to you what it talks about praise god so last week i was talking to you about how god works now this week we're taking it a step further to talk to you about how the word of god works in us praise god the same thing as how god works because god will not work without his word is good. So I want to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts chapter 20. Praise God. And, and, and you know, Luke wrote the book of Acts. Luke, the person that wrote the book of Luke is the same person that wrote the book of Acts. And he was a disciple of Apostle Paul. Praise God. Now he, he said in verse 32, Paul speaking here because he was quoting Paul. Paul was having this meeting with the leaders of the church as Ephesus because he was leaving them. He had been there preaching for a while and then it's time to leave. So he gathered them together and he began to instruct them about the church and what to do. In verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I want you to follow this carefully. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. I commend. In other words, I refer you. I, I, I put you in the hands of God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. And then he says, which is able, which is capable, which has the ability to build you up. 
and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Now note this, number one, there is an inheritance that God has reserved to share among the sanctified ones. Now who are the sanctified ones? They are the set apart ones. I want you to follow me. Set apart by word. Jesus speaking in John chapter 17, praying to the Father. He says, sanctify them by thy word, by thy truth. And then he says, thy word is truth. So when he says there is an inheritance among the sanctified ones, he is saying an inheritance that is given to those who have been separated by the word of God. So how did God separate them by his word? I'll tell you, that's why I'm bringing this message to you. So Paul says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. And that grace, that word of his grace is able to build you up. Now it matters when you come to Christ and, and, and what happens in your life afterwards. You see, some people don't get this. Have you given your life to Christ? Yes, I've given my life to Christ. When did you give your life to Christ? Oh, two years ago, I went to church. I was so down and I, and I just felt life was all over. And then I went to this church and I heard this pastor preach and I liked the message. He gave me hope. And then when he made the altar call, I went out and I gave my heart to Christ. Okay, good. You gave your heart to Christ. So what has happened next? No, well, um, they, they, they took me to a room afterwards. Someone talked to me, got my phone number and they came to visit me. And since then, I've been going to church and I've been committed to church. Church and I've even joined the workforce of my church. So I'm in the ushering department or I'm in the, you know, you know, fine. So now, now that's on one hand. Then on the other hand, you find people who are saying, but, but I don't get, I've been, I've been a church worker for the past five years, but I, I don't see any positive um, thing going on in my life. I still struggle concerning things. I still I still struggle to pay my bills. I still struggle. You know, all those kind of things. Now, what is, you see, he's telling you here that he's commending you to the word of God's grace. And then he says, that word is able to build you up. Now, what is it about church that builds you up? It is not being a member of a unit or a group in the church. It is exposing yourself for the word of God to make an entrance in you. I want you to follow me now. If the word of God is not making an entrance in you, you will not be built up. And if you're not being built up, I'm telling you, I'm sorry to say this, you might just be wasting your time. See? Now, the funny thing about it is you will see the unbelievers around you making progress. You will see them doing well, so to speak. You will see them, you know, doing stuff. And you will look at yourself and like, look, I can't lie like they lie. I can't cheat like they cheat. I can't, um, I can't do deals like they do deals. But, uh, but why is my life this way? I thought Jesus was going to make my life beautiful. Yes, Jesus has the ability and commitment to make your life beautiful. But you see, he can only do it through the agency of his word. So Paul says that this word is able to build you up first. And when you have been built up, an inheritance will be deposited into your hands. What inheritance? The same kind of inheritance that God shares among the sanctified saints. Now, what's that telling you? Among the sanctified saints, there is a kind of testimony that we carry. Now, when you notice that your testimony is that kind of testimony, then you realize that, oh, that means God has recognized me as one of the sanctified saints. I told you sanctified saints means set apart saints. Meaning, it's not every saint that is sanctified. You might just be a saint, but you have not been sanctified. How do you get sanctified? I told you earlier, it is when you are separated by His Word. Now hear me, how does the Word build us up? 
Remember, he told us it is God in Philippians. Said, it is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, how does that happen? Now, I'm here, and then he says, it is God that is at work in me. Now, do I know that God is at work in me? Is there a way to tell that God is at work in me? Now, if, if, if there is a way to tell, then I want to know that way. What is the way to tell that God is at work in you? When you realize that your life is beginning to take a new turn. Now, first place to notice it is not the result. That's the mistake a lot of us make. You got born again, you know, and then from the day you got born again, you loved God. You started praying, you started doing things, and then you notice that uh, any prayer you pray just gets answered like that. Like, whoa, okay, praise God, I love this. You know, why, why, why hasn't, why haven't I done this a long while now? You know, you know, and then you are so excited. You you pray for people. You see things happen, and then suddenly you get to this point where you you pray and it doesn't happen. You, you command and you see no result. And you begin to wonder, uh, 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 maybe, and then you start scanning your whole mind. Maybe you have committed a sin. Maybe you did something wrong. And then you know how it is. You always find dead somewhere, praise God. And then you begin to say, I think it is this thing. You begin to tie the season. When was the last time God answered me quickly? Oh, it was because before this thing happened. Hey, you see my life now? And then you start saying, it seems the Lord has departed from me. It seems the Holy Spirit has departed from me. No, no. No, that first time, it's just the introduction. He's introducing you to a life, just like the disciples of Jesus Christ. The Bible says God gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. And then they went out and, and preached and casted out demons and healed the sick, according to the scriptures. But hey, one day one man brought his son to them and, and who was possessed of the devil. And, and this man brought his son to them and the Bible says they could not cast that devil out of the boy. They couldn't, meaning they tried, it didn't work. Now, and then Jesus came and just spoke the word and said, get out of him. And the devil got out of the boy. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, Come on. It's like he didn't tell us everything. So why didn't we cast it out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Huh? But, but we believe. You, know, you sent us out that time. We, we did it. So why? Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And then he told them, look, this kind doesn't go out but by fasting and prayer. Uh -huh. You didn't tell us about fasting and prayer before now. <laughs> you see? Actually, one time they decide, the Pharisees asked you, you, your disciples don't fast. And then Jesus said to them, why should they fast when the bridegroom is still around? He said, when the bridegroom is taken away, then they would fast. Now, what was Jesus trying to tell them? Jesus was telling them that what you did before was the introductory part. Now, to get into the real thing, there is a work that you need to do. Praise God. That's what the Bible says. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, what does it mean to walk out your salvation? He doesn't say, go and start carrying buckets or start trekking 10 miles to tell God, Lord, Lord I trek 10 miles to church every day, so I'm walking out my salvation. He's not telling you to go into long fast and say, Lord, I'm fasting so that you will sanctify me. No. No, fasting doesn't sanctify you. Praise God. I'm telling the truth. It is the word of God that sanctifies you. And that's why if you are fasting, you must apply yourself to his word. If you are fasting, you must give attention to his word. Because the only thing that will make a difference in that fast is not the hunger strike. It is what comes to you from God's word. Now that is what is going to change the situation. The situation will not change because you have fasted for 100 days. No, sir. No, sir. You know, sometimes we think, we you know, when you fast, God will not look at you and say, Hey, my son, you have tried. 
let me show you mercy. That thing you have been asking for, let me answer it to you. No, sir. That is not how it works. What happens in that fast is the word of God that comes to you and your heart to believe it. Now, why is it important to fast? Because when you fast, your flesh is killed. The tendency for you to re 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 react by the flesh reduces. Now, when you fast, you naturally you become a deep thinker. See, that's the truth. You become a deep thinker. Now, when the word of God is not imputed in that fast, you might as well turn into one philosopher. But when you apply God's word in that fast, then the word of God begins to take ascendancy over your mind. And that is where power comes in. Praise God. I'm telling you, this is going to be an exciting week because we have to stop here now because of time. Praise God. Listen, get, get ready for a transforming week. I'm telling you the truth. And God is surely going to transform you by his word. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.